Um, and we had other elements that we had to shoot um, for the show, live action pieces that would be composited to it. This is an ending that for those of you who know the show, um, recognize this film clip, but you're probably wondering who some of the people are in the clip. And uh, we'll give you a little peek of some of them. So would you like to get into our work? And then we were also shooting the pre-show. So this is what we built on a stage in uh, Los Angeles. And uh, then you'll see how we sort of finished it off digitally. Let's add the pieces. We wanted to put a lot more um, comedy in the show than we had in the original show. And we wanted to put a lot more show in the show, frankly. I mean, if you think about it, when the original show opened, we didn't have Fast Pass and all of our show timings were calculated on how long you would be in the queue. But once Fast Pass came along, of course the standby people were in the rooms longer than intended, which always bugs us. You don't want to hear what we call a rollover. So we decided to lengthen everything. So it's like, let's do 20 minute pre-show in a 20 minute toy room and let's create all new material for the load corridor. There's lots of stuff to see so that every time you go, the goal is you can always discover something new in there. Uh, this is Glenn McIntosh, he's the very talented uh, animation supervisor director from ILM. And uh, here we were working out one of the gags for preload with the little pit droids doing a windshield wiping gag. And there's Glenn acting out for Ace for later. This is Scott Sohan, he's the editor of our show here, showing them how to do it. And look at all the ways ILM gave us for windshield wipers. You can have that one. You can have that one. You can have a lefty. You can have that one, or you can have that one. That's the one we picked. We like that the best. But that was the fun with ILM, is they would actually give us all these choices, say, okay, you asked for a windshield, so now the guys have come up with a couple variations. It's like, wow. It was really so much fun working with a great group. This is Scott Drake. He did those beautiful uh, storyboard images you saw earlier. And here he is working on Ace. I think this is an image some of you probably saw in the LinkedIn pre-show at Disneyland for a while. Um, when we were figuring out our, our saga of our, our droids. Because we picked a 3.5 as our time frame, unfortunately, we couldn't have Rex anymore. Because Rex doesn't know, it was, it was his first flight, his first day on the job. And going back in time, we thought, ooh, we gotta have another robot. So we spent a lot of time trying to figure out who that robot should be. And we had a contest at Imagineering, uh, open to all of our designers, and we got lots of different robot designs for Ace. Um, we got this one. We got a lot of these. Some are a little too sinister, because again, we're going for comedy. That's really scary. Um, <laughs> somebody needed some therapy. <laughs> and uh, lots more, lots more. But in the end, we wound up going with something along the lines of this, because we wanted it to be a transition. We want to say, well, we're earlier in time for Star Tours, so we're going to have to make changes on the designs in Europe. But, you know, just you, you want to feel as if that, that Rex was an evolutionary, um, some, coming from something earlier that had a little bit of this look. So, you know, the visor, the mouth, the kind of overall body shape, all sort of led us in this direction. And we continued to evolve it um, to this um, look, which ILM then remodeled, sent up to ILM. They put it into Star Tours colors. And this became our pilot ace. And we were moving along with this for quite some time. Um, but something changed. And the reason it changed is we were trying to go 180 degrees away from Rex, from the kind of skittish, nervous, high-strung um, character that that robot was. And that was voiced, obviously, by Pee Wee Herman, Paul Rubens, uh, in the original show. And so we kept trying to bring this sort of football player, top gun, personality to this robot because we wanted it to be so different from the old show. And every time we met with George, we'd get back in the car and go, I don't think he's buying it. And we recorded Patrick Warburton for a very funny script. No, it wasn't buying it. And one day in the car, I was like, guys, I think we have to bite the bullet. George wants the same type of character as we had in the original show. 
And uh, so the next day, I called Kathy Rogers, the show producer, and said, how did it go? I said, went great. We got a little change. Um, <laughs> George isn't buying the, the pilot. And she said, well, this is problematic because, you know, we're, you know, scheduled. We, we got to have this thing done. So the next morning, driving to work, it's like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We've got we've to solve this robot thing. And then it was one of those little aha moments going, oh my gosh, we have this character already. Um, it's C-3PO. He's high strung, he's nervous, he's comedic. Everybody knows him, so we've got a great shorthand for storytelling. And, uh, you know, we came to work and said, guys, we have our robots. What do you mean? We're behind schedule. We're never going to make it. It's like, it's C-3PO. Oh, we already have the tooling. We have the figure in the pre-show. And it's like, will it fit? Will it work? And uh, our animation team did an amazing job of figuring out how to get C-3PO into the cockpit. We went back to George. We pitched the idea to George. George loved it. And suddenly we had a whole new pilot, um, an old pilot, someone we know and love. But George felt it was really important for us to explain to the audience, because we still wanted to have Ace, because it didn't make sense, well, why is 3PO piloting this? And, oh, we're so convoluted. And I said, well, we need a switch. We need to make the audience believe that Ace is supposed to be our pilot, going to be our pilot, and then somehow he gets switched. And we, we worked it out in our head, and George made us go back after we completed work with ILM and said, no, you need to film a scene create a scene that explains exactly to the audience how that switch happens. And so this, this shows you the progression as, as we went from rough to finish. It shows you kind of the way we were with ILM and George, how we'd rough things in and then they get smoother and smoother. So this is the scene that you know from the pre-show that connects the dots, as George said. You want to connect all the story dots clearly. Ah, uh, excuse me, Captain. Who are you? See, three here, systems analyst. It's about time. The binary motivator is acting now. Well, binary is like a second language to me, but I can't fix the motivator from here. <sighs> Just make it quick. We're scheduled to depart in a few minutes. Then there's no time to lose. Off with you. Oh, good, good. Tell the droids. Really? Oh, now this is malfunctioning too. <laughs> so, story complete. On we go. Now, who doesn't love this? I love this woman, and she was so sweet, and we had so much fun with her doing the original show. We could not find her. We could not find her. We looked, and we looked, and we looked, and finally the clock ran out, and we had to recast, and I was like, guys, I don't think we can find another person for this. What do you mean, of course we can another, no, 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 not another person. We need a droid. If we can't have her, let's create a droid and get more Star Wars into the universe. So, ILM gave us some options, and we selected this character, oops, we selected that character from episode two, I think, from Dex's Diner, and then we gave her the Star Tours look um, with ILM, and said, great, we've got our spoke spot for Star Tours, multilingual, thankfully, because we needed that for our safety skill. And then we tried many, many voices out against this picture, and the one that we loved most was Alice and Janney, um, who you know as Peach and lots of other roles. She was so, she was so hysterically fun and so sweet. Um, so we had our spoke spot for Star Tours, and then it was time to get going on the rest of the attraction because we had, you know, we had said 3.5, and in saying 3.5, suddenly we said, well, we got a lot of changes we need to make to the attraction, um, and, and we felt it was important to do so, so that when you guys came in and saw it again, it would be familiar, and you'd say, oh, thank God they didn't ruin it, um, but it would also be fresh where you'd say, oh, cool, it's got a new look, oh, yeah, well, there's Rex on it. Um, so we started with, all, obviously, these images. This was a uh, first piece of, of work by Scott Drake to sort of say what the, the pre-show would look like. We decided with, like, many airlines, you know, United Airlines to change the paint scheme. Or, you know, a lot of airlines change their color schemes over time. We decided to flip it. So we said, well, let's put the blue on the inside and the red, I mean, the orange on the outside. Because blue and orange would be Star Tours colors, and they would always keep those colors. Uh, we decided we needed a whole new status board. Um, that should have media on it the entire time that you're in the queue, so there's always something to look at and see with new commercials, as we love the commercials from the past, but thought we needed new ones. Uh, and we spent a lot of time detailing the, you know, the Star Speeder 1000, since we're back in time, what it would look like. And this is a, a turnaround model that ILM created for us to buy off and say, okay, that's it, so we could go into production. And then the uh, Goose Droids had some work. Now, for those of you who don't know, although probably all of you know, 
Um, they're called the Blue Stories because on the original show we stole them from America Sings one night because we didn't have the budget to have animated figures in the toy room. And I don't know that anybody noticed. So the barbershop quartets became trios in America Sings, and we got two droids. And, uh, and they worked really hard for many, many years. And so what we said was, well, we're earlier in time, so they would probably, you know, have had more parts on them initially, and then over time the parts fell off or they didn't get maintained, and so that they became the sort of grimier look that was appropriate for the early um, Star Tours kind of look of the droid room. So, so they got a new look, a fresh look, and then we said, well, you know, we really should, Star Tours is really very, very simple. It really is Star Wars plus going to LAX is the ride. <laughs> it's that simple, really. It's Star Wars and the airport together. And so we said, well, what's changed in the 20 years since we did the original show in air travel? And the answer was security. Uh, so we said, well, maybe we should make this scene a security scene and uh, put the droids to work in new roles. So uh, G290 and G240 uh, got new jobs, and um, one doing luggage scanning, and of course, just as, in, as uh, he does in the old show, he's more interested in talking to the passengers than he is in looking at what he should be looking at. And so, things get by him that shouldn't get by him, and things don't get by him that shouldn't get by him. Um, that's kind of the personality of this droid. And uh, Susan Dana, a production designer, had a great, great fun in giving him this very cool metallic blue uh, look, so I spiffed them all up. And uh, we had a lot of fun. This is the last thing we did in the show. And George, again, yeah, kept encouraging us to have fun, have fun, have fun. This is Disneyland and Disney parks. You know, put more humor into it. So we said, all right. So we decided for the luggage scanner, we had you know dozens and dozens of bags in here. We said, well, let's just have some fun and let's have some Star Wars things. Let's have some Star Tours things. Well, let's have some Disneyland things in here for guests to discover. I'm sure you discovered most of them. So, you know, from things that maybe aren't too silly, like Stormtrooper helmets, to things that are silly, like an Ewok playing a Stormtrooper helmet, um, to Captain EO robots being smuggled through, uh, to Wally's possessions. And here, yeah, there's the boob with the, the plant and the video VHS. Um, to some Disney movie references. Yeah, Black Hole. Um, to Madame Leota, <laughs> who always travels with spellbooks. So we just sort of went for it. So no, let's just have fun with this and, and be a little bit silly. Why not? And uh, then we have the human scanner, the other droid. And uh, because we had changed our role on the pilot, and we loved Patrick Warburton so much, we called him back in and said, you know, we went a different way with the pilot on the show. And we didn't 